Al Zawahiri. Al Zawahiri. Al Zawahiri. Al Zawahiri. Al Zawahiri. The United States conducted a successful counterterrorism operation. Al Qaeda leader Ayman Al Zawahiri has been killed by a CIA drone strike in Afghanistan. Hey, it's Fado, and this is Concentrated. So it's August 8th, and America's coming off of a pretty big victory this weekend. We basically weekend Al-Qaeda. You need to leave. All right. No, we basically got the man behind the man behind 9-11. The United States CIA deployed a successful counterterrorism operation in Afghanistan and took out Al-Qaeda leader Aman al-Zahari. Now, this news comes 11 years after the Navy SEALs initial takedown of Osama bin Laden and 21 years after 9-11 finally giving a sense of closure to the war on terror campaign George Bush had declared back in 2001. And for the first time in a long time, it seemed like the US, irrespective of whether you're a Democrat or Republican, is finally finding something to celebrate together. But why is it that this 70-year-old Egyptian man's death was so important to the US, to the point where we were hell-bent on playing a three-decade-long game of hide-and-seek? And just why did he have a $25 million bounty on his head? He named one of the most wanted men on the planet. To explain that, first, we need to understand just who Ayman Zahari is. Was. So, let me explain. The leader of the terrorist group Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawari, was killed in a CIA drone strike. And two of those missiles were fired at Mr. Uh, Zawari. Al-Zawahiri was once the right-hand man of Osama bin Laden. This is great news, not only for the U.S., but for the entire world. All right, that's cool and all, but let's take a second to understand just who Ayman al-Zawari was. <laughs> Zahari was born in an upscale suburb of Cairo, Egypt, to a prosperous family of physicians and scholars. Now, as a teenager, he was introduced to hardcore conservative thinkers and their ideology, but he had to suppress his political and religious involvement as he began taking classes in medical school. Then, in 1981, Zahari's name starts to become known and notorious when he becomes involved in the assassination of Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. So from here, he spends some time in jail and then eventually gets released. So what is he new now as a free man? He travels to Pakistan in the late 80s and he uses his medical skill to aid in the fight against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. And it was during this time where he meets his partner in crime, quite literally, Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden would lecture at the hospital that Zahari was working in, and eventually the two just struck a friendship, with Zahari becoming Osama's personal physician. Now, long story short, a very powerful pair for shortly after was the birth of Al-Qaeda. After the Soviets were chased out, Bin Laden founded Al-Qaeda, the base, and turned toward a global jihad. During this time, the Taliban ran Afghanistan, seized power, and provided support to Zahari and Bin Laden to recruit and train thousands of foreign fighters across North Africa and the Middle East. The late 90s was a time in which Al-Qaeda was able to maintain a low profile in Afghanistan, and with the help of the Taliban, the group was able to discreetly plot their attacks. Al-Qaeda first began landing on people's radars in 1998 when they attacked the United States embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing more than 200 people. And then in 2000, Al-Qaeda would strike again. American warship USS Cole in Yemen, killing 17 American sailors and wounding another 40. But it wouldn't be until 9-11 that Al-Qaeda reached the peak of its terror attacks, striking the Twin Towers and killing 3,000 Americans. And since the Taliban in Afghanistan provided a safe haven for Al-Qaeda before, the Harun bin Laden just retreated back to Afghanistan after the attacks. Now the US needed to plan a response and did so by conducting the war on terror in October of 2001. Our war on terror begins with Al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. America invaded Afghanistan, and over the next few years, U.S. drone strikes would take out high-ranking members of Al-Qaeda. Now, the Taliban government would fall after U.S. occupation, and Al-Qaeda retreated from the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And as this goes on, Al-Qaeda continues to spread its message to different areas like Africa, the Middle East, and Southwest Asia, effectively transforming the group to an international terrorist organization. Now, it wouldn't be until 10 years after the attacks on 9-11 that the U.S. was able to successfully take out bin Laden. Now, this was a victory all around the world. However, even after Osama's death, there continued to be a number of attacks conducted under the Al-Qaeda regime. But how so? Well, the man behind the man behind the attacks decided to take over. 
Now, don't get it twisted. While not described as the charismatic leader that bin Laden had been, identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Zahiri was viewed as something much more devious. Think about it like this. He was like the chief operating officer of Al Qaeda. Osama would serve as the figurehead leader that brought prestige and money, while Zahiri was the true mastermind behind the attacks. And it wasn't until Osama died that Zahiri would finally step out of the shadows and rise to power to become the new leader of Al Qaeda. Zahiri now in power, he had one objective in mind expand. His aim was to continue to draw new recruits and establish new Al-Qaeda entities from all around the world. So the attacks continued and the chaos pursued in areas like Somalia, Syria, the Sahel portion of West Africa and Kenya. The perimeter of what should be one of Somalia's most secure buildings breached by a single carbon. At least nine gunmen streamed through here, all of them carrying machine guns, all of them wearing suicide bomb vests. Now, around the same time, August 2021 to be exact, President Biden orders American troops to withdraw out of Afghanistan and return home. The last American troops cleared out of Bagram Air Base without celebrations or fanfare. The U.S. military, citing security concerns, is not saying when or how U.S. troops are leaving. At the White House, President Biden also did not want to draw attention to Afghanistan. Are you worried that the Afghan government might fall? I think they have the capacity to be able to sustain the government. Almost immediately after, the Taliban take over the Afghan government. They have the capacity to be able to sustain Bruh. the government. That's a huge problem. The Taliban are supposed to be in alliance with the U.S. to rout out terrorism from the country. But the Taliban had hosted bin Laden and Zahiri before. Who's to say they wouldn't do it again and establish a new safe haven for terrorists? So what happens? That's exactly what happens. Zahiri sees this new Afghanistan and starts feeling comfortable. So he sends his wife and daughter and grandchildren to a nice neighborhood in Kabul. And soon after, he decides to join them. The US identified Zahiri in Kabul early on in the year and had spent months trying to determine if this was truly him or not. In the meantime, Zahiri is living comfortably and has no idea what's going on. Then one day, he decides to go on his balcony. The US received authorization to fire and boom, no more Zahiri. On Saturday, at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al Qaeda, Iman al Zawiri. Undoubtedly, this is a win for the US and the world. Joe Biden, America, all of us, we should take a victory lap. The war on terror seems to finally be over. However, we cannot deny that there are obvious questions still here. Today is August of 2022. As mentioned before, about a year ago, American troops were removed from Afghanistan. Now, here's what we were told. Troops were brought out of Afghanistan as we had accomplished what we had set out to do, take out Al Qaeda. Because we had Qaeda got them. And additionally, we were told that the Afghan government wouldn't collapse. Now, here's what we know happened immediately after. The Taliban recaptured control of the country, and soon, Zahiri moved back into Afghanistan, believing he'd be safer there. How can the leader of Al Qaeda be living in a capital city? This area was home to high-ranking Taliban officials. Remember, the Taliban are supposed to be in alliance with the US. And Zahiri's just straight chilling. He's like casual, just walking out and about, greeting his neighbors in the morning, collecting his groceries at a local bazaar. The Taliban were a group that Al Qaeda used to propel to power. How would they be the ones cooperating with the US? Okay, yeah, they had agreed to the Doha Agreement, which stated the Taliban would not allow Afghanistan to become a base of attacks on other countries. But then why were the Taliban regime harboring Al Qaeda? Zahir was staying in a house owned by a high-ranking Taliban official. And even after, the Taliban tried to cover up the drone strike and hide proof that Zahir was ever living there. Why do you think that is? Because the Taliban have not changed, promising to publicly rout out terrorism while secretly harboring it within. Again, today should be a day of triumph. However, this has to look awfully familiar. When have we seen this before? A president's domestic policy is stalling, our re-election chances are waning, though it's urgent that we take out a foreign adversary? Today, it's... Biden taking out al-Zahari. Yesterday was Trump taking out Baghdadi, and before that, Obama taking out bin Laden. All necessary actions needed against the war on terror. But the pattern just continues. You take out the leader, you celebrate, and forget the issue at hand. Then a few years down the line, it might just be yet another drone strike. A new president, but the same war on terror.